Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through some of the assembly of the automata box. Um, I already have the box assembled, those are just flush and make constraints. You'll notice too there's a few holes drilled here and there um, for the cranks and the follower rods and the things like that to go through. So um, that's what we're going to use. I'm going to start from here um, and hopefully this is something that will really help you out if you're really struggling with a bitter, maybe you're new to it, um, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we want you to be the expert in the classroom. And so, you know, these really are made for, for teachers, not for students, uh, because we don't want your students, you know, your students should be able to play around and you need to be able to explain to them how things work or why you're choosing a, a particular, you know, type of constraint in order to lock things together. So without further ado let's get going so i have some parts laid out here i'm going to show you how they assemble in just a minute the first thing i want to do is i want to take this axle and i want to kind of place it in the middle here i can't really get it to float in the right spot but i kind of want to go through the middle because that's what we're going to turn this is my crank so what i'm going to use is called the make constraint but where i choose is going to be very important here so you'll notice if i hover over certain parts of the axle it highlights the entire axis as opposed to say hovering over the end which highlights the circle so i want to make sure that i grab the axis because the thing that i want to make is this axis i'm going to click to one of the circular holes that i have here so notice if i choose right here it's going to make it to the center point of the circle that's not what i want maybe easier to grab there you can stop for just a split second see if i hover over the cylinder here as opposed to the end point i have the axis i'm going to click here and now what we've done is we've made it those axes, axes together. I'm going to click OK and just show you what it looks like. So now this object can move in and out, and that's great. But it can't come out. So there's the first step. Next, we're going to take a couple of spacers. You can see them up here. We're going to place them on the ends, and we're going to use those in just a minute to try to lock things into place. Now, these particular spacers, you could do all kinds of things. If you look, let me rotate um, this object for you. There it is, free rotate. Lost it for a second. You'll see that this is beveled on one side. It really doesn't matter if it looks like this. We're just trying to mimic something that we're going to shove on the end of this thing to keep it in place. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to lock it in um, into place with just another constraint. Same idea here. What I want to do in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose an insert constraint. I'm going to say that I want to insert this circle to wrap around this circle. Now, I don't like the alignment there, so I'm going to go through, and you have two ideas here. You can have opposed alignment or aligned. It's kind of like a mate and a flush. But if I change it to this surface, you'll notice then that the rod goes all the way through and then just kind of comes flush up at the end. I'm going to click OK. I know right now that it's embedded a little bit into that wood. That's okay. We'll, we'll talk about how to fix that in just a second. I'm going to flip around to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit so I can see it. Um, and oh, in fact, you know what? We're going to go a different route. Before I go any further, I want this to be flush against the surface. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it out a little bit further. It's just going to make it easier to grab hold of in a minute. And I'm going to constrain. I'm going to mate this surface is the outer surface of the box to the inner surface of my washer there now i'm going to click ok and let's see what it looks like what i've just done is i've locked that thing in place now it can spin if you see that it can spin hard to tell there you go it can spin in place which is what we want it to do but i can no longer pull that thing out of the box it's locked into place it's going to be pretty convenient so what i'm going to do over on this side Pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and free rotate this. I'm going to grab it and spin it around so that's on the outside. Not that it matters, again, but just like to be detail oriented. And this time, instead of doing the insert, see the problem with insert is if I do insert, it's going to try to place it at the end of the dowel rod. And we have some other stuff that's going to go on to the side. You'll see in a second why. So instead, I'm just going to do a make constraint. I'm going to choose, make sure I get the axis. There you go. Of the washer and the axis. There we go. I'm going to click OK. I need to slide that in a little bit. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make that mate with the outer surface of the box. I'm going to pull this away just to make it easier to grab in a second. I'm going to constrain. It's on the mate constraint right now. Outer surface of the box. 
inner surface of the washer and click OK. Let's go back to our home view and take a look at what it looks like. There we go. So again, at this point in time, what we have is the crank installed with the spacers on either end and those spacers are flush with the surface of the box. That's a good first video. It's about five minutes. I'm going to cut it off here and when I come back, what I'll do is I'll show you how to take the crank on the outside, the hand crank, this eccentric cam, and this dowel rod and we'll place those next to be on the outside here so we can turn things.